welcome to FX Street. If you like what we're doing, you like the content we're producing, head on over to YouTube, join our channel, hit that subscribe button, and follow us on Twitter uh, individually, Akash at uh, uh, Magneco Zero, and myself at Just Analysis One. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Actually, before we go over Bitcoin, I want to bring you over to. Uh, so, TradingView has two or three really nice um, charts that uh, you may or may not be familiar with. There's the total market cap. So, this is the this is the candlestick chart of the total market cap uh, of, of cryptos. And then you have total two, which is the market cap minus Bitcoin. And then you have the total three, which is the altcoin market, essentially. It's, it's, it's uh, the market cap excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, a lot of times they look very similar. Sometimes they'll deviate, especially when you see altcoins going into a bull run. But from a daily chart perspective, and actually let's look at the three-week three week chart perspective, um, we're sitting at these lows. The Kijin Sen on the three chart is is holding its support. One thing I will point out is that there's a Kumo twist. From an Ichimoku perspective, Kumo twists are really important because they they can identify when um, important you know new swing highs and lows develop. So there's one coming up at the end of the month. So that could be a a, a point of inflection to to watch. On the weekly chart, I mean it's it's uh, stuck in between. Uh, the cloud here, which is one of the reasons that you just see a ton of volatility, but from, from an oscillator perspective, it's still bullish and it could seize a lot of expansion up and out of there. On the daily chart, yeah, it's struggling to to hold up. But let's let's zip on over to Bitcoin and see what it's doing. Now Bitcoin itself completed an ideal bullish Ichimoku breakout. Uh, the last time one of those happened was back here in um, October 4th. Uh, the time before that, it was in on July 30th. The time before that, it was all the way back in October of 2020. So they don't happen that often on the daily chart, but when they do, they, they typically result in some pretty nice moves higher. And essentially what we're looking at here is Bitcoin still testing the breakout above the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, it's, it's moved above it, got halted at the 50% Fib retracement, like spot on it, and it's pulled back down. Now it's finding some support against that uh, 618 at 41,165. Um, yeah, it, if, it can, if there's a daily close between now and next Tuesday, um, between at around 42,600, that is likely the beginning of another expansion move. And really, I mean, it looks, and I, I want, I didn't point this out in the other videos that we, Akash and I did this morning, but um, the, uh, <laughs> Optima is one of the most advanced charting platforms on the planet, but it does not have a head and shoulders pattern drawing tool. <laughs> What's, what is up with that? Yeah. But honestly, how, how often do you use that? Honestly, I don't. The head and shoulders pattern? Yeah. Like never. Never. Yeah, I this is not drawing to the back of shoulders. But it's just, it's just hilarious. Yeah. It has a GAN square yeah. of nine. I mean, you can take you can look at astronomical data and cycles, but there is no there is no uh head and shoulders drawing tool. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. not there. Um but when you look at Bitcoin, uh, let me find a different one. Use this one. Get rid of the Ichimoku system. And I'm, I'm not a huge fan of head and shoulders patterns, but I am a fan of inverse head and shoulders patterns in the show, but the bottom of a move. And there is one here. That's in development. So, you know, there's, there is that. Uh, is it going to play out? Who knows? But I mean, the point I hope is, not. Is you don't want it to be bullish. Why? Why do you hate Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, again, yeah. If it if it collapses, it it's it, folks. Cryptos are the only thing right now that 
you can say, I feel like people say like, oh, I wish I would have bought Apple at this price and Microsoft at this price and Amazon at this price. Um, and that never, you'll never have those opportunities. Bitcoin does it all the time. I mean, how many, how many people would, would have wished they would have bought, like, uh, like when Bitcoin was trading at 66,000 back in last April, how many people wish they would have bought it at, you know, 28 or 30K, you know? Me. I mean, yeah. Or, uh, or, I did. <laughs> or uh, yeah, even before that, like in 2015, I mean, geez, but let's just, yeah, structurally here, I mean, there's a lot of bearish continuation showing up. Um, bear flag set up here where the breakdown below that bear flag would coincide with the initiation of a new completion of a new bear Shichimuku breakout that broadly. Oh man, that could be, that could be a very ugly dive, uh, like sub 30 revisiting, revisiting the 2020, uh, one lows perhaps even lower i mean actually i just want to i don't want to spend too much time on this but uh fib expansion off the swing yeah that 618 is down oh let's it's logarithmic chart so let's look at it logarithmically yeah the 100 fib extension is down at 23.5k Oh my God, that would be great. It would even be better if I got the 1618, but that's, that's, what, that's what the swing structure looks like. Um, but yeah, that's that fallback pattern. Hold on here. That, that does, huh. that does line up with that swing structure. Hmm. Anyways, okay, I know I'm just nerding a little bit here. So uh, upside potential going into the weekend and then before Kosh and I visit on next Tuesday, probably going to be limited around 45K. And downside potential could be substantial. Uh, it could very easily nosedive below the last swing lows here and revisit the 35K. So that's what I see, Akash. I'll pass it off to you. Thank you, John. So where do I start? Okay. Cool. So let me start from uh, a daily time perspective, which uh, in this chart, there are clear demarcations that I've drawn, uh, at least from my perspective, uh, where I believe where I'm going to flip bullish or bearish. Uh, for me to flip bullish, I want Bitcoin to produce a daily candlestick close above 52K. And just as a confirmation, I would wait to see how the weekly candle on that particular week closes, right? If, if it does close above 52K, then I would, so somewhere like this, where we get a weekly and a daily candlestick close above 52K would be good and I would feel bullish, right? In which case I would be looking for a higher low relative to this low and this low uh, to accumulate. This is where I'm going to accumulate. And Hopefully, we get to 69K uh, and go to 80K, probably even 100K, right? So this is my bullish scenario. Uh, as for the bearish outlook, I don't want to see Bitcoin close below 35K because that's this is the only support level here that is preventing it from crashing and crashing all the way down to 30K, probably even 29.8K. And the reason for that is even though uh, we did uh, get like massive crashes here on uh, 24 Jan, uh, all the candlesticks on a daily time frame closed above 35K. Right, so that would be like an initial confirmation. If price produces a uh, daily candlestick close below 35K, I would be looking to short Bitcoin uh, into 29.8K. And the reason for this is because of the triple top setup that was formed here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uncollected liquidity present below these lows here. So if we ever close below this, there's a very good chance that we could come down, sweep below 29.8k and collect liquidity, right? And this is like a conservative uh, outlook from bearish perspective. But if you look at the global, okay, I'm not sure if I can show that. Uh, do I have to share my screen again? Just one sec. Right, so if you look at uh, why I've marked at 22.8K, 22.4K as an important level is because from uh, global insulation out of the money, 
Now, the immediate support level here extends roughly from 35K to 42K. But beyond this, the, the average buying price of uh, investors' purchase roughly 2.42 million Bitcoin is roughly 22,589. So that is my second uh, potential bottom, roughly around 22.5K. So this is uh, an overall outlook of Bitcoin uh, from a macro perspective. If you don't want to uh, bother yourself with the minutia of uh, hardly a four-hour time frames, right? Uh, so another macro outlook that I uh, refer to in uh, a lot of my previous videos is the bearish breaker here. Uh, I expected, uh, so this, this squiggly line here is what I expected, how I expected Bitcoin to play out. Uh, a rejection probably uh, around 42K is what I expected, but the price moved way beyond that with, out of the breaker, but uh, closed the candlesticks inside the breaker. So the breaker is still not invalidated. Uh, so for now, I'm still expecting Bitcoin to head down to this daily demand zone here at 38.8K. Right, but if we get a daily candlestick close below 36.4K, then I'm expecting it to head down to so 36.4K, 35K, that's where the, the bearish scenario actually kicks in. Uh, this is also from a daily time frame. So, but what I'm actually really interested in is this triple tap setup here. John, you were referring to this as an inverse headed shoulders, uh, which is, I'm expecting Bitcoin to fill this fair valley gap here, extending from 42.8K to 38.6K. I'm expecting this to be filled out completely, right, which coincides with this daily demand zone at 38.8K. So far, things uh, have played out pretty good. Uh, if you look at it from an early time frame, uh, the price has stopped around this cluster here, and it's kind of evaluating where to go next. Uh, so, if you look at the triple tap setup, I am at least I'm convinced that we're going to head down to daily demand zone at 38.8k. Uh, perhaps we could also stop at 39.8k. Either way, I believe this downtrend is going to continue. So that pretty much sums up my analysis for Bitcoin, right? I'm I'm not taking any trades here for Bitcoin. Uh, probably look uh, to open long positions if we get a retest of the daily demand zone with a tight stop loss. And if you get a close below 36.5K, then I'll be looking to see how Bitcoin reacts on 35K. If we close below 35K, like I explained, uh, we're heading down to 30K, 29.8K. That's it for my end. Right on. All right. Well, thank you, Akash. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.